Previously on The Code, Road to the Final. The teams took to the court for the grand final and a tight first quarter had the crowd on the edge of their seats. We met the personalities behind the players as they prepared for the 2013 regular season. Tonight, a closer look at the final round clash against the Queenslanders and the biggest game of the year comes to its nail-biting conclusion. A warm Adelaide morning, and recent recruits Steph Popolu and Sam Pullman make their way to the stadium. The Thunderbirds have already qualified for the final series, but the game still carries some significance. Could have Brisbane a few weeks in a row. Yeah, which I think is kind of exciting, and being the last game this week and being in Adelaide is also um, it's exciting to play. I was saying to Mum this morning actually how nice it is having home games. Just being able to do your own thing leading up to the game and sleep in your own bed, eat your own breakfast, it's nice. What do you reckon Jane will do for the full game? Yeah. Oh yeah, good call, I don't know. I reckon she'll, get, she'll whip out something new, yeah. The ANZ Championship table shows the Pink Ladies as minor premiers. Thank you. However, with a number of results to be determined this weekend, they could potentially meet today's opposition again in the final series. What game? It was an awesome game. Oh, I think we won back. There is a more relaxed atmosphere in the hours leading to centre pass, but winning is a habit, and there is no intention of breaking that trend today. It's just a weird game. It's, you know, we're not protecting anything for the first week in, what, 12, 14 weeks, and they've got everything to play for, and, you know, I guess we have too, in a way. Look, defensively it's a tricky one, I think, you know, we need Shans to run into form and she's got the proven record against Romelda, so maybe that's an opportunity for, for her to have 60 minutes. Ladies, uh, we're going to play a game to start with, so what we need is a little bit of space because we last we wanted an injury in the game game. Stop on your dot! We can be really proud of what we've done, guys. We really can. We've had club records. We've had a winning streak that only a couple of teams have been out of match, and that's pretty good in an in international competition in, in just six years. They have everything to play for. They can finish anywhere between second and fourth, so they're coming in with a little bit of a different uh, angle than, than we, we are. Uh, and I was very pleasing to read that they are going to bring everything and throwing everything at us. I'd be very disappointed if they brought anything less. So let's bring it, Firebirds. Today is such a great opportunity. We're not going to have this opportunity again to go out there and just give everything a go. Let's not hold anything back. Let's give everything a shot. We don't really have anything to lose from this game. So why don't we go out there, enjoy it, and take those risks that we've been doing in, tra in training. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's have it. Three, three, two, one. That was a really difficult game because the Firebirds had everything to play for, whereas we had the minor premiership and that home final already set in place. So motivation-wise, I don't think uh, it changed a lot for us because we approach every game um, to win and to play how we want to play the Thunderbird style. Shut it down! Shut down one! Shut down one! Yes, Natty! Well done! Go, go, go! Come on! Quick, quick, quick! You guys come right off that wall to start with, um, so draw it up and yeah. But you guys are still coming out in time, you've got to split it so that one's hard, one's low, alright? Just yours, Nay! Your job! Your job! 
It was a difficult one to coach in because there were things that we rolled out when we played them in the finals, in the grand final, that we had to keep under wraps for that last minor round game. So we had to go in with a, a will to win against a very mighty opponent that had everything to lose. Well done, Matt. Guys, we've got to be fast to react. Like as soon as there's a free down there, we walk back to our spots and bang, it's into Romelda. We have to be faster. Neighbo, you must look at, your, you're looking around, you're looking at Medhurst and your girl's gone, all right? Only yours, only yours. We'd secure a top spot, but the rest of the placings were yet to be determined. So there was a chance that we were going to play the Firebirds in the first semi-final, and we really wanted to get that mental edge over them. Well, guys, we've got to do better than that, all right? You, you've got to know what's going on. You can't just pass it over a third. Someone bloody present, OK? Come on, we practice it. You need to look each other in the eye and get that right, because we cannot progress any further unless we're going to do the basics well. Fingers, Ezzy! Fingers, Ez! Strong colour! We knew we had to pull together as a group. We had a big game the following week. So I think, you know, all year we've kind of had the same vibe uh, going into games. We've always been focused on the game plan. We've always looked at each other and believed that we could do it. So I don't think that this game was any different in that sense. Um, but, you know, it certainly was a challenge to go out there and try and put out one of our best performances. Try not to give too much away at the same time because we knew, again, we could potentially be playing them the week after. Do the break. Do it. Go back! Yeah! Six and three balls. Woo! Well okay, what an awesome job. All right, we've done it all year. Why not do it again in the last round, eh? But we should just be so proud of ourselves. We said we want to enjoy it. Uh, no one panicked as we haven't done all year. And we know when we've got anywhere within striking distance, we've got these teams, all right? Looks like we'll play the Vixens next week, so bring on the Coles New World as well, all right? Great job on the bench, girls, and great gutsy effort. Give the crowd a wave. That's the last time they'll see a lot of us. Take the team around to all four stands, yeah. Go to all four stands. Go on, go and give them a clap. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. How's my lippy? Is it 10 hours? No, you're still in. Yeah, I bought the 10 hour lipstick. I was just, I'm thinking if it's true, I'll put it on. No, we're at four hours now. <laughs> it doesn't really matter who we play, it's, it's more about um, you know, making sure that we're in tippy top shape for all of them. They're all excellent from here on in. I thought the Firebirds played a really good game, and, and I'd probably say I thought they played better than us for most of the game. But I guess when it's close, um, you know, their young midcourt made a couple of errors, uh, and our experience again shone through, pretty much like what happened last time when we played them in Queensland. I've been here for four years now, so I kind of feel like this is a bit more home. Actually, I'm the coordinator of the Three Cheers program at Netball SA. At the after-match function, the team mingle with stakeholders and supporters caught between the emotions of satisfaction and anticipation. How are you feeling after today? Such a tight game. Today was a job well done, but also a job unfinished. The Vixens will be dispatched next week, and the team will be one game away from the ultimate prize. Coming up, the grand final comes down to a few precious seconds. A few weeks later, the opposition is the same, but the stakes are higher. The Firebirds lead by four goals in the grand final. Thunderbird CEO Ben Scales is a nervous spectator. The second quarter, we just kept that defence pressure up, and I think our focus all year has been maintaining that full one-on-one -on -one defence pressure for 60 minutes. Teams might stay with us for one or two quarters. It's very hard when you're playing against that that style of defence. Personally, myself, I remember thinking during the game, probably not playing or doing enough at the moment. I need to do something to help our team get in front. There was a Shani Layden intercept off a poor pass from Chelsea Pittman, and then just vintage Nat Von Birdo flew down the court. And from that moment there, I think that was the key moment for me that realised, oh, here we go, we're in a grand final right now because the crowd just went nuts. Everyone on court lifted. We all had goosebumps. It was just one of those moments that really changed the game. The four-goal deficit has turned into a one-goal lead for the home team, 
as they break for half time. The seesaw nature of the last 30 minutes reminds the playing group not to get ahead of themselves. We were really excited because the momentum had swung our way and when we got into the rooms again we were calm and ready to talk about the fact that the second half was about us again and it was about us keeping to keep sticking to the game plan. At the halftime break there was a lot of talk about the group just not wanting to make mistakes and we just said to the players that you have to go for it. No regrets, put it out there and make it happen. They had a massive wobble and we didn't straight back in. All right, that will be our biggest regret if we do that. All right, so we don't. We put our foot down. We have to call time, call time. Do a set play, do a set play. But by hook or by crook, hell or high water, when we get that ball, we make it to go. All right. Yeah. Kimra Valley and the 19 year old starts us underway in this third quarter. And that long ambitious pass doesn't come off. Not a great start for the Firebirds. It has, interestingly, at the end of the second quarter, just as the team's headed off for half-time, both Zach Bomberto and Laura Bites had a chat to the umpires, both teams having concerns. The Thunderbirds extend their lead goal by goal in the most dominant quarter so far. But experienced heads know that grand finals can turn on a dime. I reckon that's probably the most anxious I've ever been, ever. Um, I could feel it in my chest, I was just knew that I had to get the ball and I was going for everything. To play really well and get six goals up during that quarter was just a fantastic effort. The one thing I always had in the back of my mind is that they score so quickly and they've got Ramada Aiken there who can turn a game around in, in 30 seconds. So I, I didn't feel safe, but I felt like we had real control of the game. At that break, everyone was like, let's not stop here, let's keep pushing on. You know, we're not gonna let them back in it. And then what happens? We let them back in it. Uh, I think they scored the first five goals in that uh, last quarter. You know, I think we stepped out in the start of the fourth quarter and we were just nervous. <laughs> and we got to a point where I felt like, are we ever gonna score here? Yeah, that was... Oh. Of opportunities like that and they'll start to make the Thunderbirds concerned about where they're at. They're so Desperate to stem the tide of goals from the visitors, the Thunderbirds captain decides to stop the clock. I called time out and I think that that maybe was something that we really needed as a team because it really was just that we were nervous and we went from being six up to one up in no time at all. Um, there was a tactical timeout called and um, unfortunately for me, but I think it was a really good move for the team, I came off and Lee came on and did an amazing job and that really um, opened it up for us. Nat went into wing attack, which she hasn't trained at wing attack all season, but she did a great job and that just worked so well, gave the Firebirds defenders something else to think about. Line here and it looks like there might have been a change, there has. Nat Bomberto's moved into wing attack position and Waddington's on. Big call. That's a massive call. I think it was a, a really good change and, a, and it refocused the side because we haven't played like that so it made everyone very attuned to what we were doing. And it's often during the heat of battle that the clearest heads will prevail. I just remember thinking, I think that we're going to be okay because we've practiced these situations so many times. I knew that every single player on the court knew exactly what they had to do. There wasn't going to be any snap, crazy decisions. I knew that if we were two up, would be okay, and that was always in my head. As soon as we got a goal, two up, I could breathe. But the quick scoring Firebirds, sensing the smallest opportunity, strike with 60 seconds remaining. From the centre pass, I reckon they just bombed it in, and within two seconds, boom, goal, and I just thought, crap. If they do that again, we're only one up at this stage, we're, we're in trouble. Girls could probably tell that, you know, there was only 30 seconds or so left on the clock, and. They wanted to come at me, so it only had to be a real short ball. So I'm just glad that I didn't throw it away in the end. We'd been in that situation so many times throughout the year where we were one up, and to us, one up is enough to win. Just to have that presence of mind to tick down the seconds as required, work the ball around, get on the circle edge, find the shooters, and you know, it was just one of those things where you're riding every pass. And then with seconds to go, Erin Bell has handed the chance to win the game. 
I remember getting the ball and I had, had the shot and everyone's asked me, you know, what were you thinking when you had that final shot? Were you stressing out? Um, but to be honest, I really wasn't thinking about the outcome and I guess that's really lucky. I wasn't thinking, oh my gosh, if I don't get this in, then we're going to lose. Because in my mind, we were one up and that's enough to win. In a competition measured in months, in a game measured in minutes, the result is a matter of inches. When the whistle went, it was just relief. It was, thank goodness, we've won. All this hard work has paid off. I just roared and I turned around and wanted to look for the first pink player in the dress and embrace the team that I'm so proud of. I made a beeline for Erin and Nat, I think. I think they were hugging him. So I played with them in the last grand final and they were kind of straight in my line of sight. I just leapt up off the seat, I'm like, yes, jumping up and down. I remember turning to Jane straight away and giving her a massive hug, squeezed her so tight I almost popped her head off. I didn't want to let go. As soon as the whistle went, all I wanted to do was collapse on the ground because I was just exhausted. Exhausted because I was so nervous beforehand, exhausted because it was a tough game. I know I ran and jumped on that first and then we ran to Carla and I could see the girls from the bench coming on and everyone is just so happy and smiling and you just want to embrace each other and just never want that feeling to, to go away. After the break, the final formalities before the team gets to relax with friends and family. Uh, I'm just so, so proud of you guys. The guts and the composure and the belief in each other, whatever your role was tonight, guys, it didn't matter because we're all about the 12. So I'm just so proud. Best team I've ever coached, and I'm old, I've coached a lot of teams. So. What a fantastic achievement for us to win that. And thanks to the coaches for giving us all the preparation that we could have possibly had, to the support staff, to everyone involved. It took a lot of hard work, but we got there. <laughs> Enjoy tonight, it's something very special. It's great for our club and for our state to have the first team to have two mm -hmm. ANZ yeah. teams. Yeah. Treasure the medals because it doesn't come around all the time. Graham Gilbert is an overjoyed president, but success always comes with a price. In this case, a compulsory change of hair colour. Shani Layton does the honours and adds another spill to her resume. Thank you. Good yelling, guys. You were awesome. Oh, look, you know, we've done it all year. We have. Seriously, we've um, had it, lost it, had it, lost it, but had it. I think 12 times out of 13 or 13 times out of 14, so I was going with the odds there. I faith in all my bench, uh, all of them have had game time this year and uh, Firebirds, I think they got within one after we were six up and we had to do something uh, and I think Lee's pre-match instruction was run like you stole something. I didn't think that we had it until that very last second and um, you know it would have been nice to be able to enjoy it a bit more but grand finals aren't like that and I think in the last minute I was just trying to delay the time a bit and walk around and take the throw in slowly and um, thankfully got that last goal in because after missing one under the post, I wasn't going to be missing two. So, <laughs> <laughs> When we're under pressure like that, that's when we perform our best. And yes, we got let them get back in, but when we get to that spot, I know as a team, that's when we actually knuckle down even harder and have more confidence in the team than when we, we never like having a lead this team. We like to make it a really tight finish. With energy reserves being exhausted, one final formal commitment is left for the girls to fulfil. The families are awesome and it's just wonderful to, um, you know, if we're not Adelaide born, we're Adelaide made here and uh, it's lovely to see our Adelaide made families come across so often and support. The thing that I really respect about our family support is that you don't just break for your own kid, you actually give to the whole team and that's just really rare and, and wonderful. So thank you everybody for doing that.
when your administration is right behind you, we feel that as a team. So I'd like to thank the board and particularly Graham Gilbert, who's been a wonderful support to me personally. Uh, and he's got pink hair, if you haven't noticed that in the back there. That's the end of the formalities. It's really about the, these girls and the team um, enjoying tonight and for you, family and friends and the people that have supported these girls to achieve what they did on the court today, about enjoying yourself. So on behalf of Nepal SA, thank you very much. Congratulations once and finally to the 2013 ANZ Championship Premiership team. Surrounded by friends and family, the team is able to finally bring some closure to their magnificent season. At the end of the game, it seemed it was like a massive relief because you're just emotionally, like, just exhausted and physically exhausted. And now that you know, we're kind of bit, I don't know, realised that we've got a medal around our necks now. I can't wipe the smile off my face. I'm just ecstatic. I'm just overwhelmed, and it's only just setting in now. But I'm just so proud of all the pink ladies. And this has been a two-year process for us. We've worked so, so hard, week in, week out. So I'm just glad that now we get to enjoy the win. It's just still a bit surreal at the moment. You know, when it came down to that last 20 seconds, I tried not to get too excited because I didn't want to get ahead of myself. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was like, have we won? Like, is there going to be a trick? Is there going to be another quarter? But it's just it's starting to sink in, but it's just so exciting and so glad to uh, share this with a great bunch of girls. I just tried to find the closest person to me so I could run and jump on someone. Because that's what you always imagine, you know, winning the grand final and just have everyone jump on each other and you'll fall over. So I just wanted to make sure that there was someone there for me to grab so I wasn't standing by myself uh, alone. But um, yeah, so I don't know what I was thinking. I was just happy. I guess relief was a big one because it was such a close game. The belief that we've had is just so, so strong. And I think people have said that when we're down, it's almost that's when we're at our calmest because we know how to react to those situations. We know that everyone's got each other's back. And um, we were just confident, not in, a, not in a cocky way at all, but just knew that everyone was going to do their job and that we'd be able to get there. The Adelaide Thunderbirds have set a benchmark in domestic netball. No other team has won the title on two occasions. And on the surface, one could credit the talent, the development, and the support of the organisation for achieving such success. But dig deeper and you'll find a work ethic unmatched, a superior level of planning, but most critically, an ego-free culture where everyone contributes to setting the standard. There is no secret to this success but the 2013 Thunderbirds just did it better than anyone else. For more content, join The Code Conversation on Twitter and Facebook. Like or follow us for Series 5 release dates and visit the iTunes store for Series 1 to 4. The Road to the Final DVD is now available to buy. Go to thecodetvshow.com.au to order your copy.